Oh, you have noticed this? Well, yes, I am now proud owner of the XT1000 robotic arm that will improve not only my speed picking, but also my speed endurance and the pick accuracy. You want one too? Well, you only have to subscribe to your Sinhobus channel and check out these five riffs to improve your picking. Here we go. Hey guitar champion, what's going on? I'm Mr. Hamba, back from my practice cave and welcome to today's video. Yes, you know, I love solos, but sometimes I like to spice up my practice routine, give it a little bit of diversity and practice also some riffs. And there are actually some really, really cool riffs out there, which you can work on your picking precision, on your picking speed, on your picking endurance and all this kind of stuff that we want to improve at. So now I'm going to give you five riffs that I learned in the past few months, which I think sounding really awesome, has a really cool level of difficulty to it and it's really good for our right hand. So got the Justin approved. All right, I hope you like this little video. Let's start with riff number one. As always, the free tabs you can find in the link in the description box. There, you can download them. All right, weniger schnacken, Kopf und Nacken. Let's start with riff number one. Okay, so now riff number one is coming from an extremely underrated late 80s thrash metal band called Forbidden. And the name of the song is Through the Eyes of Glass. Here's the riff. <laughs> Let me play you this riff slow. Here we have a certain sequence which is really important for today's video is three note sequence and by this odd number sequence we are doing something really interesting for our right hand because we are always shifting the stroke direction from the first note of every sequence. So one rule is really important for today's video everything is alternate picking so Every time when we play the downstroke, after that comes an upstroke, and after that upstroke comes a downstroke, and then again an upstroke, and then again a downstroke, and an upstroke, and whatnot. And so by the three note phrase, we're starting with a downstroke. And the next time when we're repeating the sequence, we're starting with an upstroke. By that we are creating two different scenarios. One is inside picking, and the other one is outside picking. Outside picking means that the tip of our pick is playing outside those two strings, like when we're starting on a downstroke on the a D string and going then with an upstroke to the A string, the tip of the pick is outside of these strings. Inside picking is the opposite, so when we're starting with a downstroke and going to an upstroke with from the D to the A string, then the tip of our pick is inside in between those strings inside picking. And yeah, you can cheat your way through this scenario with inside picking because for most guitar players inside picking kind of feels weird. But I would recommend to not do it because in my experience in the last few years as a touring metal guitar player I realized that working on your inside picking can help you a lot to be more precise, to be more tight and be more accurate in your rhythm guitar playing. Because certain songs, certain licks require us inside picking and therefore it's really good when you already have practiced and learned this technique. All right, for the left hand, it's actually pretty easy what we're doing. We have the C sharp minor power chord, going to C sharp minor six, C sharp flat five, C sharp, and then going to B major with the E, well, sorry, with the D sharp, the major third as our bass note. So in here we have a pattern of three, three, two, creates eight. So we can play this one as 60 notes or at eight notes. This is riff number one, forbidden through the eyes of glass. Let's check out riff number two. In riff number two, we are taking the same formula with this odd number kind of sequence, and now we are adding string skipping with it. The riff is from a technical death metal band called Obscura. The song is Anti Cosmic Overload, and here's the riff. <laughs> Thank you. 
So the sequence here is changing between a two note pattern, one two, one two, one two, one two, and the one two three, one two three, one two pattern. One two, one two, one two, one two, one two three, one two three, one two. The one two is pretty interesting because here I recommend to not start with upstroke like you maybe would do it intentionally because it's a little bit easier in the first place to do the string skipping with outside picking, but for inside picking, this is a really good exercise to do the one-two section with starting with a downstroke. Here we have octaves, first E, then E flat, C, B, and then a little run where we're going from E to F sharp. To G. What I'm doing here to have a little bit more control about ringing strings is that I put my index finger nearly flat that only the A string, you can hear that, and the rest of the strings are muted. And with that it's not so devastating when you accidentally hit also the D string when you're going from the G to the A string. The song originally is in D standard, but for today's video I'm going to do everything in E standard because it's easier for you if you only want to learn cool riffs, which you can use to progress in your picking technique. So I don't think it's really necessary to tune this one also to D standard, but if you want to play along with the song, then you have to tune your guitar to D standard. All right, this is riff number two. Let's check out riff number three. Riff number three is from one of my all-time favorite bands called Dream Theater. And it's actually one of the best riffs to work Work on your down picking endurance. Go home James, John Petrucci is now calling. Um, the riff is from the song Pull Me Under and it goes like this. Now, why is this for me so much harder than some of the fastest Metallica riffs? Because yeah, we have only have downstrokes, but we have to play them with par muting and we are not playing single note lines, we are playing power chords. So our right hand has to push through three or two strings. This is much harder than playing just single note lines. For our left hand, it's actually pretty easy. We're just playing chords. The chords that we are playing are E, D, A major with a major third as the bass note, in this case C sharp, C, and then again E, going to F sharp power chord, going to C sharp diminished, which uh, represents an A7 dominant chord, then C, go to the Neapolitan sex chord, prog chord progression, and the F, and then E. Alright, but playing this as Yes, it's a really good endurance kind of uh, exercise. John is playing it live with alternate picking or sometimes with accents like. Something like this, which makes it a little bit easier. But in the original recording, it's all palm muted, all downstrokes, and really, really good as an endurance test for your right hand. So, and now to riff number four. Riff number four is from Paul Gilbert, and it's called Technical Difficulties. Here we go. I accidentally played this one a little bit faster than it was usually, so don't be afraid of the tempo. It's a lot of fun to play a little bit more faster. But this riff is super awesome to work on your right hand because now we're including through the precision exercise and the endurance exercise, we're now including speed. So what we have here, we have now again the 3-3-2 phrase, but this time a 3-3-3-3-2 kind of phrase. And we're going from a C Lydian kind of shape and arpeggio to an E minor. And in between that we have 16 note triplet runs. Here now we need something which is called two-way pick slanting. 
Two-way pick slanting is really important and it's about how we hold and which kind of angle we hold our pick. When you have no clue about pick slanting, then please check out my big video, The Ultimate Guide for Speed Picking, or check out the Then of Speed Picking link. It's in the description box, my online masterclass, where I have more than five hours and 50 exercises for speed picking, alternate picking, pick slanting, string skipping, and all this kind of stuff. But we actually needed the awareness of pick slanting as well in the riffs before that, because to execute the inside picking technique it requires upward pick sending which means that our angle of the pick is slightly looking up <laughs> and for that one stroke where we start with an up stroke after the first three notes one two three this one here we need downward pick slanting we get this downward pick slanting by using the so-called snap movement more about this in the ultimate guide for speed picking or in the then of speed picking and after the snap movement, we are going straight back again to upward pick slanting. Now here with the run in between that, we have a little bit more time. The last note actually in the lick before that, this one here, this last note, again snap movement to go to downward pick slanting. And then we have to change to upward and on the A string again, downward pick slanting. Let me summarize this for you real quickly, a little bit slower. I know it can be confusing in the beginning, but it's really worth to check out. So here we have upward, downward, upward, downward, upward, downward. So we are constantly switching our wrist for the pick slanting movement. And then for the run, we have upward, downward, and going back to the upward section. Now here are a few things where I think it's really important to focus on. Because I saw a lot of covers lately and a lot of people are focusing on the wrong things, I would say. For example, some of the people are playing the runs with only hammer-ons, but nah, we want to improve our speed picking, so we are going to play it. Everything with alternate picking, of course. And the next thing is that the synchronization gets a little bit off in the last two notes of the main phrase. These two notes, because what happened here sometimes, sometimes it can happen that you're playing the first note, hammering the next and then playing it. So it sounds more like this. And not like this. So be aware of that when you're playing this as well, that you're not playing it, but playing it. Like this. So here it's really important to focus on those two notes that the motion of our right and on the left hand is happening in the same moment. All right, and then I'm just going an octafier here and here, and the rest of it is a little bit more fun shredding, which is not really important for a right hand, but it makes a lot of fun. The diminished, and then the run, which is actually a really good run for upward pick sending. Alright, this is riff number four. Let's continue to riff number five. Riff number five is actually one of the hardest riffs that I ever have to play. And it's a riff from my own band called Eternity's End, written by neoclassical shred master Christian Minzner, the head of the band. And yeah, it's from the song Call of Valkyries and it goes like this. Let me play this one for you slow. Here now we have everything coming together. String skipping, inside picking, outside picking, cross picking, the awareness of pick slanting. All these kind of things are now important to master this riff. But on the other hand, this is also a really cool riff to showcase how you can really cool and creatively outline chords as a riff. For example, we're starting with an E major Phrygian dominant kind of sound, going to F major to A minor and then we have A minor and E7 dominant. Now this riff alone is actually pretty pretty hard already. Yeah. 
But then Christian was coming to me and was saying like, Hey, Justin, you know what? You could play the harmonization out of it. And the harmonization is everything of that with more string skipping and more stretches. And it goes like this. Ah, the last six notes, they're always fucking me up. All right, and so much for five cool riffs to work on your picking precision. If you like this little video, then feel free to leave a subscribe, leave a like, and tell me in the comment section, what are your favorite riffs to work on your picking? Is it bleed? Or maybe some fast Metallica riffs? Whatever, write it down in the comment, what are your favorites? I hope I'm going to see you in my next video. Cheers so far, and stay progress. Bye.